two bending basics, how to make perfect bends every time. But first, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and a comment. Okay, today we're going to be replicating this shape. Now, this is one and a quarter inch round tubing, and we are going to perfectly replicate this. How are we going to do that? Well, first, we're going to start by making a radius gauge. And that's a tool used to measure the amount of material needed to make a bend. Once we have this, we can calculate it out, make perfect bends every time. Now, this is a gauge that I have already fabricated, has green tape on the graduations with numbers, and that's just for a visual so you can uh, understand it easier. Now, this is the actual gauge that we're going to be using. And those graduations there are all in one inch increments. And once we have a radius gauge with whatever degree you're going to bend, you can fabricate pretty much anything. So first we're going to start by measuring out about two foot of sacrificial metal. And we're going to create our radius gauge out of this. And it's the same uh, size tubing that we used. Now this is important. The tube bending dies and the radius gauge must be the same thickness and OD as the tubing being used. All right, we've got it cut. Now I'm laying out in one inch increments to the end of the tube. And today we're going to be using the Pro Tools 105 tubing bender. Now this formula works the same if you have a hydraulic or manual bender. Okay, we're going to set the machine to the start position. And we're confirming that we're using the one and a quarter inch die with this follower. And that matches our tubing. Loading the tubing. Now the next step is critical. Every time we have to use the same reference point, that point can be anywhere that you choose. I'm choosing this point. And this is the little aluminum block that has the pointer for the degree gauge. Now it's removable, so you want to make sure it's set in the same place every time. And now we're going to make our 90 degree bend. And go a little past for spring back. And there it is. Okay, now we're going to look for the start of the bend. That's our first step in calculating. Okay, there are one inch increments. Now you see the slight deformation there. That's the actual start of the bend. And we need to know that. Okay, so now we're going to measure, or we're going to count, let me, let me say, from the end of the pipe, one, two, three, four, and about three quarter. So that's the amount of material needed to the start of the bend four and three quarter inches okay now we're going to find the center of the bend and we're going to count again this is going to be the center Count increments to center, then count same amount on the opposite side of the tubing and cut off. And now we've fabricated a radius gauge. 
And remember, we're using one inch increments. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight and a half on each side. That's center. Hey, now we can calculate our bends. Radius gauge finished. Now we can calculate a bend. Hey, I just said that. Here we go. Okay. Double checking it on the actual piece we're bending. And here's where the math comes in. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Now we know it takes seventeen inches for this OD and tubing to create a ninety degree bend. Okay, so now we've ascertained that. We'll make a mark and we'll count to that mark and that is the reference start mark. Now a little bit of addition. Okay, so 13 and three quarter inches to the start of the bend plus Seventeen for the total amount of the bend. Add those two numbers together. Thirty and three quarter inches. Now measure thirty and three quarter inches from the end of the tubing to make the first bend. We've set our mark. Measure from the end of the tubing. Loading. Now we remember our reference point. And that's where we place our mark. And you have to start at your original reference point. Okay, we set the preload on the machine. And we're going to go minus or negative about three for our spring back. And we're starting our bend. And the first few times, it, it seems complicated, but once you do it once or twice, you'll pick it up really easily. Just follow the formula. And now let's check our work. And it looks like the first bend is really accurate. Now we're going to make our second bend and finish this thing out. Okay, using our radius gauge again, we're just repeating the first step. Making a reference start mark. And we're transferring that onto our workpiece. Okay, let's get this thing loaded. And now this is a, an important step here. We're setting up everything the same way we did the last time. Using our same reference start mark. But since we've already bent one side or performed a bend on one side of the tubing, set the preload. We want to make sure that our already bent side is level. 
If it's not level and you start to bend, it'll bend a twist into the tubing. Now your arms aren't parallel. And uh, yeah, that's a bad situation. And if it's heavy wall tubing, yeah, you're not going to get that out very easy. So it's real simple just to put a uh, level on the end. Start square, stay square, and end square. Or that's the rules anyway. All right, there we have it accomplished. Now let's see what we have. Everything's lined up. Now we'll just put a guide on all three sides. Everything fits in between. Okay, now you might have noticed that the bend is actually slightly different than the original. And the reason for that is that was bent with a different centerline radius die. Now we've replicated this perfectly, but it's not going to have that same contour bend unless it's done accomplished with the same CLR uh, die. Not a big deal at all. So we're going to get this thing cut off and uh, that's that. And there you have it. Create the radius gauge first. You can make any bend or angle or degree when bending tubing. Hey, and as always, thanks for watching.